This week, a couple's relationship is being wrecked by this dog. Distressed Rowan is at her wit's end. Boyfriend George doesn't know which way to turn. And little Lucy, Rowan's black and white mongrel, is tearing them apart. Rowan and George met five years ago, fell in love and have recently decided it's time to move in together. But there's just one thing stopping them. <coughs> Little Lucy's awful behaviour. That's awful. That is what you get when you come home from work on an evening. Since Rowan got Lucy, she's caused carnage. She steals from the fridge, howls the house down, drools over your dinner, but worst of all is when she comes face to face with the postman. She'll bark at him. She'll scream at him. But Lucy isn't all bark, and given half a chance, she's been known to bite the postman. She just kind of hung off his arm for a bit by her fangs, and he just had blood pouring out of his arm. But that's nothing compared to when she's left at home on her own. She barks like a feral animal. Every time you go, she thinks you're never coming back. Lucy copes with the stress with good old-fashioned comfort eating. If the fridge isn't pretty much nailed shut, she'll be in it as soon as you leave the house. If the fridge is totally full, she eat everything in it. What's this, Lucy? That's naughty. Naughty girl, look. Sometimes she sits. You're a naughty girl. So it can just make you want to turn around and go back out the house. And when George drops by, it's like they've both acquired a stalker. It's like she can't be further than five feet away from you at any time. It's just annoying. And at mealtimes, they get the unusual feeling they're being watched. Sometimes you really do just have to give her what you're eating because you're so disgusted with the dribble. And it puts a strain on our relationship, and it's almost as if the dogs sort of come between us. <laughs> but when dealing with the behaviour, George and Rowan aren't singing from the same hymn sheet. What's that? You're a naughty girl. No. She gets very angry with the dog, and she's too hard on it. He's very soft on her. Lucy has sort of cottoned on to this fact and will always run to George when she's been naughty. And Lucy's antics have meant they've had to put their plans on hold. We want to move in together, but we don't feel like we can until the dog's problems are sorted. Having been twice abandoned to rescue shelters by previous owners, could the strain of Lucy's behaviour mean it's about to happen a third time? Rowan threatens to give her back to a dog's home somewhere. There's been times when um, I have said that Lucy's got to go and I've meant it. I won't let her give the dog away. She's my little princess. But this princess clearly has some serious problems and top dog trainer Victoria Stilwell believes that separation anxiety may be the root cause. As a trainer, separation anxiety is one of the most difficult problems to tackle. And unless you sort it out, your dog will be miserable and his or her behaviour will make you miserable too. So Victoria's come to Leeds to restore some order to the household. Hello. Hi. Hello. This is your little problem here. How is her behaviour affecting you? It's getting to the point where it's not good for the dog and it's not good for us and nobody's happy. We're miserable all the time because of it, so I think it's sort of come to the cringe point for Lucy. I and mean, does it affect your relationship? I think George would accept easier if I left than if Lucy did. I don't think that they could, the true, two of them could heart. be prized apart for any reason. What do you want me to do? I'd like her to be happier and not be so get so anxious when we leave her alone and for her not to attack people so that she doesn't get herself in trouble and she doesn't hurt someone one day. It's really important that I see the behaviour and, of course, the bad behaviour really happens when everyone's out. So if you wait here for about five minutes um, and then go through what you normally do when you leave and uh, we'll see her reaction, OK? okay? Yeah. All right. To catch Lucy in the act, Victoria's rigged up a couple of cameras which she can monitor from the boot of her car. This is the first time George and Rowan will have been able to see exactly what goes on when they go out. Let's see what she's doing. 
straight into the kitchen. <gasps> straight away. That was unbelievable. As soon as you were out the door, she went to the fridge. <gasps> Look at that dog opening that fridge. What's she got? Corn beef. Oh, she going back for some more? She's going back to the kitchen again. I just find it bizarre that this dog it looks like we don't feed it. Oh, what else could I have? Mm. What worries me about this is that she's eating the plastic, she's eating stuff that she shouldn't be eating, and God knows what it's doing to her digestive system. After the distraction of an impromptu picnic has passed, Lucy's sense of abandonment really starts to take over. Oh, look, that's severe separation anxiety. Severe. Oh, not happy bunny is she? She's really aggravated. This is one of the main behaviour problems um, that cause dogs to end up in rescue shelters because people just can't put up with the barking, the neighbours complaining, the destruction that they return to when they come home. It's an exceedingly difficult behaviour to treat because the fact is that it happens when you're not there. Having seen Lucy's behaviour when left alone, Victoria wants to see how she reacts when Rowan and George return. Jumping around everywhere, she's going ballistic, giving her lots of attention. That'll reinforce the crazy behaviour. When a dog that suffers with separation anxiety, the dog has experienced so much stress that where owners come back, suddenly all that stress is released and they're reinforcing that by giving that dog attention. In order for her behaviour to get better, their behaviour towards her has to change dramatically. Having seen how much food Lucy devours while the couple are out, Victoria wants to see what happens when Rowan and George are eating. The spittle's just about to drop on your... Oh, oh, spittle. Oh, oh it's on my foot. That's getting your feet wet, isn't it? Oh, OK. It's pretty intense, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> the easiest thing would be to shut her in another room, but the amount of racket she makes, scrabbling on the door, barking, whining, it would put you off either way. So right. it's easier just to let her stand there. Occasionally, I'll just sort of let her lick the plate. <laughs> That's really bad, I know. Yeah, yeah, it's really bad. If you reinforce her by giving her the food, you can't tell her off for standing there and drooling in front of you. Just can't. But it's not just their meals she wants to sink her teeth into. Next, Victoria wants to see what happens when the post arrives. and how Lucy reacts when she comes face to face with the enemy. Whoa. Does that often happen then when she sees post the postman? Every time, pretty much. If she wasn't on the lead, would she have gone for him? She wouldn't have even barked, I don't think. If she hadn't been on the lead, she'd have just gone to bite, I think. It's always the dog that doesn't actually give any indication or any warning that is more dangerous than the dog that does bark mm -hmm. and gives some sort of indication. Yeah. But then, then that, that postman could have been severely bitten. Time for Victoria to tell Rowan and George where they've been going wrong. You have a dog that is a yo-yo dog that has become unconfident because it's gone from one home to another to another. And then you got her and you gave all the attention, and this dog became hyper-attached to you. Today, I was seeing on the monitor a dog really trying to cope with the, the separation with you. Have you thought of other ways of how to treat this? Uh, we thought maybe we could get some more dogs. You thought we could get some more dogs. Yeah, we thought <laughs> if we had a pack, then they'd kind of look after each other. Actually, that's one of the things that you probably shouldn't do because she's only got focus for you and for you. None of us matter in her world except you two. And what I'm going to tell you to do is not be cloying with her and giving her attention all the time when she asks for it. You are now going to step back and you're going to teach her how to be independent and how to be confident. And you might think it's cruel, but it's what she needs. <laughs> Now Rowan and George know they've got to be less loving, Victoria's back to start training. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lucy. 
And the first thing she wants to deal with is Lucy's food stealing. When the couple go out, the dog can't cope, so she heads straight to the fridge and causes carnage around the house. I think what it's important is that rather than sort of stopping her getting to the fridge, um, actually making the fridge unpleasant for her is going to work. And this is where I use sound aversion. Now, here I've attached an alarm, all right, yeah. that when the door opens, you'll hear this. Oh, that's that's very, very loud. <laughs> and even though this might seem a little unpleasant because it is so loud and she's not going to like it, it's much better than her getting in there and swallowing something she shouldn't. I've rigged up a camera and there's a monitor outside, so let's go and see what she does. With the fridge alarmed and everyone out of the house, it's not long before Lucy's up to her old tricks. She's going in there. <laughs> oh! Oh. Straight away. Straight away. That's a loud noise. It's amazing that something could just put her off so much that she won't try it again. She might in the future, in a couple of days, but you'll have the alarm on again. Yep. So you mustn't forget to set that alarm when you leave. I mean, you're not going to need an alarm on your fridge for the rest of your, rest of your lives. It's fairly useful. But, but it's fairly useful for right now. With the food stealing taken care of, the next thing Victoria wants to deal with is all the drooling Lucy does that puts Rowan and George off having any romantic meals. All I want you to do, I'll demonstrate now, is that if she's sitting close to you, I want you just to stand up and just walk into her. As you walk into her, just say back. And then when she's a little bit further away, come back to sit down. So if you could do that once, Rowan. Back. Then again now, get up. Back. This Back technique up. uses the power of the body to down. push Lucy away Back. from food Back. whenever she goes near Back. her owners while Back. they're eating. Push her back. Back. And by constantly repeating the action every time she pesters them for food, Lucy soon realises she's not going to get fed and gives up bothering them. Good. That's where you want her. It's really important that you never, ever feed her any more from your plates, ever. No more tidbits, nothing. She's getting it. You're in my space. Get out of my space when I'm eating. OK. Yeah. With the food stealing taken care of, the next thing Victoria wants to deal with is the stress Lucy suffers when she's home alone. Victoria's come up with a plan to keep her calm so Rowan and George can find some time for each other. She knows the pre-departure cues of when you go. Keys, bag, coat. That's when she starts to get stressed. If you could both start to put your coats on. Just put your coats on. Let's see what she does. The first stage of this exercise is all about lessening Lucy's anxiety before the couple Lovely. go out. Move towards the door. Come back. Take your coats off. Come and sit down. Good. Fab, get up and do that again. By getting Rowan and George to go through the motions of leaving the house repeatedly without actually going okay. anywhere, go Lucy Take soon stops off. getting nervous every time they put their coats on. Fab. Sit back down again. Now, you're going to get up, go through the door, and immediately you've gone through the door, you're going to come back in again. Repetition is the most important part of this training. The more Rowan and George go out and come back in, the less bothered Lucy becomes about their arrival and departure. Don't give her any attention. And if they don't come make a fuss in. of her, Lucy will That's become right. less dependent on them and more confident when left home alone. Good. It's hard All not right. to give her the the level of affection that we're used to giving her because, you know, we love her to bits and we demonstrate it all the time, but I think that's one of the most important things we really need to be strong about and not give in. With the separation anxiety training in place, the next thing Victoria wants to do is calm Lucy down when the post arrives. She goes wild every time letters come through the door and Rowan and George have never been able to stop her. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach her um, how to be controlled when the letters come through the door. This training exercise is all about making Lucy stop when her aggression takes over. Go back. And Lucy's proving she's a fast Good learner. Girl. Good girl. So Victoria takes it to the next level. Lucy, here. Stop. Good girl. Very good. Very and Rowan good. and George are amazed at how quickly Lucy's learning. But will she respond to them as well? Lucy, here. Lucy here. Stop. 
Good girl, good girl. Good girl, Lucy, good girl. Back, back. Okay. Good girl. Very good. How does amazing. that feel? That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> really. Now Lucy knows to stop on command, she's ready for the final and most difficult part of this training, making her stop before she attacks the letters coming through the door. Stop! It's a result. This is the first time anyone's ever managed to stop Lucy attacking post coming through the door. Good girl, Lucy, good girl. Now Lucy's calm when the post arrives inside, Victoria's next task is to stop her trying to savage the postman out on the street. Around 5,000 postmen get bitten by dogs every year in the UK, and George is worried about Lucy's future. She tries to bite his face, that's the problem. And if she bites him again, then she'll be put down, I guess. Okay. Victoria wants to make sure Lucy never goes for him again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep feeding her chicken as the postman goes past so that she sees the arrival of the postman as something good rather than as something unpleasant. OK? Lucy, sit. Postman, good girl. Postman, good girl. Good girl. Postman, good girl. Good girl. Postman, good girl. Postman, 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 postman. Isn't the postman fantastic? No one has ever been able to control Lucy around the postman before, and Rowan really is seeing a change in her behaviour. Incredible. If you know, you've seen what she's like, and she was actually looking toward the postman in excitement for him to go past her. Bizarre, very bizarre. I didn't expect to see that at all. Rowan really shouldn't be surprised by how quickly Lucy's learning. She might be a mongrel, but that doesn't make her stupid. They're generally highly intelligent and often healthier than their purebred counterparts, as they don't suffer specific ailments associated with their particular type. Crossbreeds or mongrels are very popular pets and lovely dogs to have. Rowan's mongrel Lucy demonstrates a keen hunting instinct which tells us she's part Labrador, while her sleek physique shows she's part Whippet. Labs are known for being lovable, affectionate and patient. Whippets are known for their intelligence and speed, and Victoria thinks Rowan might bond better with Lucy if she sees a super-confident crossbreed in action. Kath Hardman is a heel-work-to-music specialist, and she's trained her mongrel Spice to an advanced level. This sport creates such a strong bond between dog and handler, it's been found to alleviate many dogs from problem behaviour. It increases the dog's confidence in being with you because you become more clear about your commands to the dog and what the dog's expected to do. I don't think many dogs really ex want to be very naughty, it's just that they don't know right from wrong. <laughs> The reason why I brought you here is I just wanted to show you how um, amazing Lucy could be. She's a crossbreed, she's highly intelligent. Spice is a crossbreed, she's highly intelligent. You can see what she can do and maybe Lucy could do a couple of those things. By tempting Lucy with treats, she soon picks up a few basic moves. Wow, your first weave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo, clever. Wow. And it's not long before Rowan and George pick them up too. Up, that's it. Good girl. That's it. Run back with. Oh, good girl. <laughs> You're, <laughs> You're enjoying it now. Aren't you? <laughs> Doing this kind of training is not only going to make her more confident; it's going to give her something else to do. So she has less time to think about the anxiety that she's feeling, less time to feel that emotion, and more time to redirect that negative emotion onto positive emotion and mental stimulation of actually doing this. Then you're going to tire your dog out, you're going to take her home, you're going to go out, and she's going to be too tired to be stressed out. Is that, is that cool? Do you...? Yeah, I've got all emotion. <laughs> it's just so nice to see her sort of so interested in something and so sort of just focused and concentrating. I'm really glad that Rowan and George saw just how Lucy was willing to learn because I think that gave them confidence. And if they're confident, Lucy's going to be confident and she needs to to get over all of her anxieties. Lucy, watch me. And with training oh, yeah. complete, oh, yeah. it's up to Rowan and George to put Victoria's Stop. work into practice. She'll be back in two me. weeks to check on progress. Girl. Postman. Postman oh, training postman. takes effect. Good. And she's controllable when the post arrives. Lucy, stop. Good girl, Lucy. 
meal times are far less intrusive, and she's not stressed out when she's left on her own. In fact, things are going so well that Rowan and George take the plunge and move into their new pad. We felt ready to move in together because um, we were coming home and we weren't seeing the destruction that we were seeing. And now we all know Rowan's the boss. <laughs> Lucy's in the middle and I'm the run to the litter still, <laughs> but at least Rowan's the boss and not Lucy. And two weeks later, Victoria's back to check on their progress. I want to congratulate you for moving into your new house. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, I, it, amazingly, here you are eating. And Lucy's in a bed, which is fantastic. Overall, um, Lucy just seems a lot more secure and confident in herself. How has the postman training been? When we use stop, she will just stop. And the more that we do that, the more she's becoming disinterested in in it happening. How has the whole real sort of separation anxiety been? It seems to be working pretty well. We've been able to mm. leave her for a, for a while. We've left her for a, about 15 minutes. Good. But Victoria wants to see this for herself. And as the ultimate test, she's rigged up a couple of cameras in the new house to see what happens when Lucy's left on her own. Oh, she's now going to the sitting room. See her up there. She's not barking. She's not barking. She's walking slower. You remember before, she was pacing here, there and everywhere, going from sofa to sofa. She hasn't gone to the fridge. This is very much better than when I came before. And well done, you, because this is hard. It's really hard. So if you go in there now, go say hello. Yep. OK. OK. okay. Fantastic. I'm really, really impressed with Rowan and George and the way that they have helped Lucy get over her separation anxiety. And they've proved to me that you can do it with hard work and consistency. Lucy is now becoming a much more confident dog and I couldn't have asked for anything better. It's not like we've got a bad child anymore and we don't have to argue about the best way to deal with it. We've sort of been shown what we should be doing and we can be really consistent and like together on it so it doesn't cause friction between us as much as it used to. Good girl. Yeah.